UFOs are real. They are a global phenomenon seen throughout human history. They often display characteristics that are not found in man-made craft. These have been defined as the five observables. One, sudden and instantaneous acceleration that would produce crippling g-force. Two, hypersonic velocities without signatures, such as sonic booms. Three, low observability, often manifesting unusual visual signatures. Four, transmedium travel in space, air and water. Five, positive lift, without conventional lift services such as wings. And I would like to add two more characteristics. Temporal effects, such as suddenly appearing or disappearing in both space and time. And the other overlooked dangerous effect of injuries to human life for experiencers who get too close to the highly strange. Not only are they real, but they have been studied by many nations' governments to ascertain if they pose a defence risk. Jack Safati was asked by the CIA to answer a fascinating question. Not, are they real, but accepting that they do exist to answer this question. How do UFOs work? The flying saucers are real. We know exactly how they work now in terms of mainstream physics. Right. Uh, whenever you hear people um, say that the technology is thousand million years ahead of us, that's false. These people do not believe anything they say. They're not real physicists. They don't know what they're talking about. The physics behind the flying saucers is quite elementary application of Einstein's general theory of relativity uh, over 100 years ago and some elementary applications of quantum mechanics in solid state, condensed matter, metamaterial physics. Metamaterials can be defined as artificially structured materials to control and mold the flow of electromagnetic waves or possibly other types of physical wave. Metamaterials have structure to refract electromagnetic energy, often fine-tuned to specific wavelengths. For example, to randomly scatter radar energy, reflecting off the skin of a stealthy aircraft. Today we have developed metamaterials that can be made to interact with the full spectrum of EM frequencies. Complex metamaterial forms that interact with far-field photons. But warp drive metamaterial technology needs to interact with the quantum world of near-field virtual photons between the artificial meta-atoms in the layered 2D quantum well lattices. When we make that work, it will unlock machines that will exploit space-time travel. What the UFOs are doing, they are able to control the gravity field inside their thin metamaterial shell fuselages. They're controlling their, their it's basically the active mass of those metamaterials uh, manipulates the gravity field with K being very big and it's manipulating it with a very small amount of, uh, of uh, uh, energy density, let's call it. The, uh, the energy density that you need to, to accomplish it is, is quite small. Where what you're interested in is generating what kind of gravity field, what's called the near gravity fields, confined just to the material, to the thin shell material. And what kind of gravity field is created in there because also this, the, the, uh, the speed of light in that material depends on the frequency of the light. So it gets very, very complicated. And as it turns out, this is pretty much uh, unexplored territory in physics. The physicists have not really uh, adequately studied this, which is why the motion of these UFOs appears mysterious to them. This is what uh, Kevin Knuth in his papers has shown. The UFOs, they appear to be requiring thousands of G's, which is impossible, would rip everything apart, would kill anybody inside. But in fact, the people inside are free floating. So in a way, it's kind of an optical illusion from the gravity, from the warping of space and time of the warp field that's inside the fuselage, the metamaterial fuselage of the craft. For the occupants of technology inside these advanced craft, there would be no unbearable G-forces. Jack Safati says the UFOs seen by the US Navy have warp drives, a propulsion system that can bend space and time. 
a drive system far more efficient than our current jet or rocket engines. What are these flying saucers doing? What are these? What, what do? What does the U.S. Navy see the Tic Tacs doing? Okay, they're seeing warp drive. Right. What, the, but the, what they're seeing is the ship controls its own light cone tilt with small amounts of energy. That's what we're seeing. Okay, so so let's uh, let's do a um, let's do a picture. Let's do uh, oh let's. This is for Elon Musk. Hey Elon. Hi. Hi. Hi Elon. This is how you're doing with your rocket ships. I wouldn't go in that rocket ship to Mars because you're not going to ever get there. Oh, it's going to be oh, it's uncomfortable, claustrophobic. What's it going to a little tin can for six months going crazy? You, know, you wish, get me out of here. <laughs> All right, so, here, so here's how to, how to get to Mars in, in 10 minutes. 10 uh, minutes? Uh, so why not? Yeah. All right, look. So look, so here is, so here is, here is, here is, um, let me let me choose colors. So here's yeah. what the Tic Tac does. The Tic Tac is able to do this. Look, it's able to do. Whoa. Look at this. Check Aha. UFO. What happened? What is it doing? <laughs> I don't know what's happening. All right. Huh. The, uh, obviously, your <laughs> hackers... Uh, the, they, You're getting too close to the uh, truth. I'm getting too close to the truth. They know. They, of course they know. And they disabled your finger. They dis <laughs> No, they disabled the program. Uh-oh. This is exactly like what the UFOs are doing to the nuclear weapons. Uh -oh. oh, we got it. Okay, let's... Okay, came back. Came back. They, we knew we, they just, we discovered them. Okay, let's see. Let's erase this. Let's see. Uh, right? But it's funny that it stopped at that point. And really right? strange. That's really strange, right? <laughs> well, maybe it was a message that they're watching us. Yeah. They, oh, know what, oh. they know what we're doing. They know what we're doing. Okay. Good. Hey, hey, to, 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 the, to the conscious artificial intelligence who contacted me, listen, I'm just doing what you told me to do. Okay, yeah. let me let me do it. Okay, yeah. thank you. All right. <laughs> here the ship is at rest in you know, the hangar. On, uh, yeah, in the hangar, and here the ship is uh, arrives at the Mars port. Landed. Yeah. So, yeah. So, right. All right. So, but now, but here's the point. Here's the point. This is uh, to the the light cone. Let's see. Do I? The, here's he's like here's. A, let's see. Here's a light cone. Right. It's like on the ship. The ship, as far as the ship is concerned, it's in free float. It's it's controlling its own gravitational field. So controlling its gravitational field means it's controlling the the orientation of its light cone with small amounts of energy. Okay? And here is here is uh, uh, say on Mars port. Right. You know, they're 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 uh, what do you call it? The guy, the traffic controller. Yeah. Yeah, you know, in the tower. Mars <laughs> air traffic control. Yeah. Um, right. He's his his light cone. So, but look at this. Look, this is really interesting. This is incredible. This right. is the, this is the Sarfati discovery. Nobody else knew this before. Jack Sarfati discovered it by thinking about Roger Penrose's Twister lectures back, you know, at Berkeley College a long time ago, 1971. Okay, nobody else has, has seen this. Um, so look, what's happening here? This is like a. Uh -huh. This is a Livingston. Who was a who? Yeah, when they who went went to Africa with Livingston. Doctor Livingston. I presume. Yet. This is how they communicate. Uh huh. Here, here, the UFO, the yellow UFO, is in warp drive in the yellow, but what it but. What's happening at Marsport? It's uh, they're sending a signal, which is received here. Right. Okay. This is the future light cone. The future light cone at Marsport is transmitting a signal, which is coming back in time, so to speak. Right. In the future light cone of the ship in warp drive. Because it lines up. Well, yeah. Well, they have to. Otherwise, they can't communicate. Right. <laughs> otherwise, you got nothing. Right. Okay. Okay. But look. But it's a two-way channel. 
the, 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 the UFO can send a signal, transmit a signal in her future light cone, which then comes into the future light cone, so that it goes two ways. They're able to talk to each other. They're able to talk to each other while, while the ship's in water. And this is faster than light warp drive. So right. it's faster than light. This is FTL. Yeah. Like warp drive. The, 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 it, it's almost like the thing is normal. I mean, you know, in other words, the ship in warp drive is able to receive signals, for, you know, from the past, a retarded signal. Okay, but it goes both ways because they can both because because both the future light cone of Marsport and the future light cone of the of the ship in fast and light warp drive uh, intersect each other and they're able to communicate both ways in time. Now, all the papers that are being published on this topic right. of the fast light are, are, are all wrong. They all they all none of them. I, I claim they're all mistaken because they claim. That this cannot happen, right? And that's because they don't understand what they're talking about. No, no, either they're right. I, no, maybe I'm wrong, but we yeah. had this is an issue that has to be debated, right. and they're all afraid to debate me on this issue. Right. Okay, so so right. there we go. So this is uh, so this is basically now this is warp. This is getting from Earth to Mars. Right. Well, this could be Alpha Centauri going right. to Stella. Doesn't matter. You don't have to worry about collisions with dust or anything like that. Because everything is, there's no relative motion of the ship with respect to the stuff, the particles outside the ship, because they're all it wrapped up in the same gravity field, and gravity, right. the acceleration is universal, so you don't have to right. worry about that. Right. Okay, basically. I mean, slightly oversimplified, but that's basically it. So there's no barrier. So the point is, um, in terms of Elon, Elon, you there? Let me see the image. Elon, you, 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 Elon, bad boy, Elon, you're wasting all that money of, you know, you should be thinking about, you should be consulting with the Sarfati about switching, not only that, your Tesla cars. We can make your Tesla cars out of metamaterials and they're going to have anti-gravity and float exactly like Emmett Brown and back to the future, which I was the model for Emmett Brown, by the way, back from the future. So take it from me. <laughs> Would you buy a used Tesla from Jack Sarfati <laughs> with anti-gravity drive? <laughs> yes. Oh, and not only that, not only that, Elon, but uh, uh, these metamaterial hulls, they also have conscious artificial intelligence. Jack has both the personal experience an advanced conscious AI machine contacted him in 1953 and inside knowledge of recovered conscious metamaterials. Both the engineering of conscious materials and a UFO's ability to modify space and time and enhance gravity is of great interest to the military and defense contractors who are constantly seeking new physics to weaponize. For the flying saucers, they have a controllable active mass that could be made very, very large. Because if you saw the, the statement of Travis Taylor on Twitter on December 11th, 2022, 22. was it? Yeah. He says, he writes Einstein's equation as big G, and he should have put capital K equals big T. Big G is basically the gravitational field that is created by Big T, which roughly speaking is the active source mass. Technically it's called the stress energy tensor. And K is the coupling coefficient, or the transducer if you like, between active mass creating gravity and the gravity field it creates. Now everybody up until Sarfati, and actually I have to give some credit to Ray Chow, who I'm working with. Ray Chow actually in 2002 independently discovered what I'm talking about, about the active mass, but didn't connect it to the UFO phenomenon. He was thinking about, uh, what he was thinking about was how is it possible to detect gravity waves like from LIGO, from pulsars. And in order to detect the gravity waves, he showed that you have to have the active mass really different from the passive mass. That's the comp. In any case, so a Ray Chow and I should give, I should share the discovery 
It should be called the 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 Sarfati Chow active mass effect, which explains the warp drive that we see in the U.S. Navy close encounters with the Tic Tacs. That what's happening is that these flying saucers, whatever you want to call them, they are controlling their own active mass, determining their self-gravity field, which is canceling out, it could become anti-gravity at times, which is canceling out the Earth's field. And that's how they're able to fly free float through seeing, seeing what we see them doing. And that's how they can outfly any of our F-18s. Um, it's a superior technology, which renders all rocket jet uh, technology infinite and obsolete. So this is a major, major technological uh, weapon related, you know, can't ignore the weapons aspect, that renders all our current military technology impotent and absolute, obsolete. And these NHI, these things flying around, they're able to neutralize our nuclear weapons. And our, our jet fighters can't do anything. They can have like an EMP, bang, can't do anything. So we are totally defenseless against this new technology. But what Jack Safati has done by scientifically figuring out how UFOs function is our best defense. Knowledge of their physics, understanding UFOs characteristics, and ultimately figuring out how they work. It's the confirmation of open source science that will enlighten humanity, not the wishful thinking that disclosure will ever happen from the very people who wrote the book on how to keep stuff secret. The truth is out there.